General, shall I advance? Lead my division forward. Uh. Yeah, go! The southern troops passed through the guns, realigned their ranks, and advanced in parade ground precision towards the Union position. 10,500 men from the divisions of Pickett and James Pettigrew moved out in silence. Their appearance awed the Federals. First Lieutenant Frank Haskell of the 6th Wisconsin later wrote an inspired account of the site. Every eye could see his legions. An overwhelming resistless tide of an ocean of armed men sweeping upon us. Regiment after regiment and brigade after brigade moved from the woods and rapidly took their places in the lines forming the assault. More than half a mile their front extends. More than a thousand yards the dull gray masses deploy. Man touching man, rank touching rank, and line supporting line. Barrel and bayonet gleam in the sun. A sloping forest of flashing steel. Right on they move as with one soul, in perfect order, without impediment of ditch or wall or stream, over ridge and slope, through orchard and meadow and cornfield, magnificent, grim, irresistible. As the gray lines approached the Union position, the left flank came under the fire of the 8th Ohio, who had been placed in an exposed position forward of the line. The undersized Ohio regiment brought the Confederate left to a complete halt. right, a brigade of Vermont troops under George Stannard swept forward from their position, swung right, and poured a destructive fire into the southern flank. With the flanks thus stalled, the troops in the rear herded towards the center. There, the fire of Alexander Webb's 1,700 men was withering and men dropped by the score. Suddenly, Confederate General Lewis Armstead led a small group of men in a desperate surge to the angle in the stone wall. As they rushed forward, Armstead shouted, Come on, boys, give them cold steel. Who will follow me? Over the wall they went. As Armstead touched a Federal artillery piece, he went down, mortally wounded. Those who had followed him 
were all soon killed, wounded, or captured. The Federals rushed reinforcements to the spot. One North Carolina unit penetrated the Federal line even further than Pickett's Virginians had, and the fighting was desperate and brutal. had broken the momentum of the assault well before they had reached the wall. There was no support coming from Seminary Ridge, even as the few who succeeded clung to their advanced positions. Slowly, in twos and threes, and then in ever-increasing numbers, the Confederates began drifting back to Seminary Ridge. The field they had crossed lay covered with death and destruction. Pickett had lost nearly half his division, and Pettigrew even more. Of the 10,500 that started, nearly 6,000 failed to return. 